For those who are politically wise, a show about the lives of Christians in Ohio involved with politics. Introducing your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Greetings, my fellow patriots, saints, and sinners. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. At the end of the show, there will be a blessing. Don't miss it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Next time you're thinking about beating the train, think again. It takes a typical freight train traveling 50 miles an hour, one and a half miles to stop. That's nearly 18 football fields. Don't try to beat the train. Ohio's roads can be highways or dieways. The choice is yours. A message from Operation Lifesaver and this station. The opinions and statements on this show belong to those who give them. The rest of the show belongs to Thomas Wise Words, all rights reserved. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. This is uh, Reverend Thomas Wise. The show is called Politically Wise. I am in the State House today with State Senator Chris Jordan. Chris, won't you tell me, won't you tell my listeners about yourself? Um, I'm uh, in the middle of my first term in the state Senate. I served in the state house and as a county commissioner prior to that. Um, I'm conservative, both uh, socially and uh, fiscally. And um, uh, I represent an area north of Columbus. um, And uh, it contains Delaware, Knox, and part of Franklin County. What committees do you sit on? The committees that I'm on, I'm the chair of the reference committee. I'm on the energy committee, I'm on health committee, and then I'm on the uh, finance subcommittee of Medicaid and and health services. What is the reference committee? It refers all the bills to what committees that they are supposed to go to uh, based on what topics are in in the particular bills. In your work here as a senator, have you have any bills pending, bills coming up that, that you're working on, or anything you can share with the listeners? Yeah, I've got uh, a number of bills that I've introduced and, and a number more that I'm currently working on. Um, uh, one protects our Second Amendment rights. It prohibits um, any laws coming from Washington from either registering or confiscating anyone's firearms here in the, the state of Ohio. Um, that's Senate Bill 36. Uh, other pieces of legislation I've done is to repeal um, what I view as an unnecessary or bad state law that says by the year 2025 that 25% of our electricity needs to be generated by renewables or advanced advanced energy sources. And I believe in letting the free market determine, you know, what consumers, you know, get as far as their local energy production. Um, and currently, uh, renewables don't make economic sense. Um, as soon as they do, I think a lot of these power companies will choose to use them, but I don't think that that's something that government needs to mandate upon uh, businesses businesses to do that at the expense of the ratepayers. So there's an, actually a mandate for that? Yeah. with By the year 2025, 25% of all of our electricity production, uh, it's divided 12.5% needs to be done by renewable energy sources. Solar, wind are the primary ones. And then 12.5% is advanced energy sources. And that, uh, I believe, can be nuclear, uh, biomass, hydroelectric. Uh, there, there are certain things that I think are considered you know, advanced and certain things that are renewables. Uh, but honestly, if it makes economic sense, I would hope that the electric companies would choose to do that. Um, but you don't want to force things down on customers that will necessarily guarantee rate increases. When did that come about? How did that, how did that mandate come about? Oh, that was about four or five years ago. There was a, an electric, uh, a piece of legislation dealing with electric generation, uh, and that was one of the big provisions of it. Um, and, you know, it's it's been attempted in other states, but Ohio has one of the highest uh, percentages and, and the, the strongest mandates 
pushing for all these renewable energies. Um, and I'll just give you a couple little examples. Uh, one of them is in the state of Massachusetts. There's a voluntary checkoff box saying that if you know it's going to cost more and they, they give the percentage increase in, in the rates, you know, will you choose to get your energy produced by renewables? It's less than one half of 1% of the customers have chosen to get uh, renewables because they see how much it will increase their rates. Hmm. And th that same question was asked here in Ohio, I think it was among the uh, rural electric cooperatives, and it was less than one-tenth of one percent of people said that they were willing to pay the, the rate increases to get renewable uh, energy created, you know, creation. Um, they just know how much it's going to cost, and I think we want to do what's best for the environment and everything else, but not if it means doubling or tripling our electric bills, you know. We also don't want to, you know not be able to afford to run the air conditioner in the middle of July. That's right. That's right. And it also affects our food bills because, you know, that refrigeration cost is not cheap. You know? it, it affects everything. It yeah. affects, uh, you know, manufacturing. It affects how much goods and services cost to get to us um, because if you increase or inflate the price of producing things, um, it, it produces food or increases food costs because a lot of times when farmers – pick the corn or the wheat or the soybeans, they have to dry them and they have huge, huge electric bills uh, to dry the grains to store it properly. Um, so it, it'll cost tens of thousands of jobs easily uh, if this thing gets fully uh, enacted. And we will be right back after the break. To some people, they're just a pet, a dog or a cat. But to you, they're part of your family. They've shared your lives, provided companionship, and given unconditional love. And just like when a human family member passes on, you want your four-legged family members to be treated with dignity. Baker Hazel and Snyder Funeral Home and Crematory has been caring for families since 1941 and now offers the same level of service for your pets at Snyder Pet Crematory. Call 274-1151. 274-1151. And the, and the other bill, you, you talked about having confiscating of guns. What is the <clears throat> thought behind that, and what is the history, kind of the history behind that? Well, uh, there was a lot of talk earlier in the year about gun control measures coming out of Washington. Um, this bill would prohibit any state, local, or federal uh, agents uh, from registering or confiscating firearms of any Ohioan that is currently legal. And it would prohibit any new changes. You know, they're trying to make anything with a pistol grip or anything with a, you know, 30-round magazine or 20-round magazine. They're trying to make all those illegal. Um, but it would prohibit them from making anything illegal, you know, tomorrow that is currently legal uh, when, whenever we would enact this, this legislation. So, meaning people wouldn't have to get rid of the guns that they've invested money in and... Mm -hmm currently used to protect themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This state hall gets on the books. How does that empower? Who, who does that empower? Does it empower the sheriffs or empower the, the, the state police to, to stop the feds from confiscating? Or the, That's, that's a, a question. Some on the left um, think that they're, um, uh, the supremacy clause will make federal law trump any state law. Um, and... It is agreed in the Constitution, it says, federal laws are the law of the land. That being said, also, the second part of the Supremacy Clause says that laws enacted by Congress have to be constitutional laws. And nowhere in the Constitution, and it's been reaffirmed here recently um, in the case in, in Washington, D.C., and one or two other Supreme Court cases, um, nowhere in the Constitution does it use such strong language as the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. That's the strongest language in the entire Constitution, basically saying that Congress shall not uh, infringe our rights to protect ourselves and our homes and our families. So uh, it would infringe upon the Second Amendment. It would also infringe upon the, the Fourth and Fifth Amendments if they came in and confiscated our guns and, and seized our properties without us being charged and convicted of crimes. Um, and then also the Tenth Amendment. You know, uh, our founders believe strongly that states had rights and that uh, 
states were incubators of ideas and things that were not uh, inherently written in the Constitution that were the responsibilities of the federal government were left up to the states or to the people. And I, not only does our Second Amendment say that it's not their responsibility to take away our guns, but it all, you know, anything that's not written in there is left up to the states. So I believe that states have an additional ability and responsibility to protect those, those rights. Uh, how did you get into politics? Um, got into politics when I was uh, a youngster. Um, I was probably three, four, or five, and I started reading books. It was mostly I was interested in the history of presidents and and politicians. And then you know I started. Uh, my parents weren't active in politics, but they they encouraged me to read whatever I, I was willing to read. Um, and then. By the time I was eight or nine, I'd save my allowance and I'd go to different fundraisers of local politicians. My parents would drop me off and pick me up and wondered why I was spending my allowance on that rather than, you know, video games or, you know, t you know toys or bikes or, or whatever. Um, and then um, moved forward, helped on a, a number of campaigns and met some of my local politicians uh, and then when I was a, a freshman in college, I got a call from one of those politicians asking if I would be a, a, a page at the state house. So I did that, and I was a staff member. And uh, when I was 24, I chose to run for um, county commissioner. And that kind of led into the state legislative and state senate races. Um, did you, how did you, did you, were you a county commissioner? <clears throat> for six years. For yeah. six years. In, in Frank, see, in Franklin? Delaware County. De Delaware County. Yeah. So, and then, then you ran for representative. State representative. State representative. Was a uh, state representative just for two years. And then, um, you know, term limits, uh, the, the senator that was in my seat prior to me um, had already served his eight years. And, uh, so it was Bill Harris, right? Yeah, yeah. term limits opened the seat up. And then you know, I ran in a three-way race. And that's, that's that. That's history. And we will be right back after the break. Have you ever driven over a pop can? Well, when a train collides with a car, it has the same force as a car running over a pop can. Obey the warnings at railroad crossings. Don't try to beat the train. Ohio's roads can be highways or dieways. The choice is yours. A message from Operation Lifesaver. But how have you seen God? How does your faith apply? To your work here, how 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 has that been? What, what can you share with us? <clears throat> well, God's, I mean, he's active in all parts of all of our lives. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of trying to pick up and, and uh, see his signs and try and see, you know, what he wants you to do. Uh, and before, you know, most of my decisions, you know, big and small, I pray and I ask him, you know, what should I do? You know, God, tell me, tell me what you what you want me to do, and he he points me um, almost always, whether not always with my party. Uh, I actually have a, a strong record of voting against my party, um, but I, I, I've gotten a number of signals that um, God pushes me to to push for freedom and to push for for people's ability to choose on their own to give on their own to live on their own without uh, government being a heavy hand over them um, and and that that's kind of what I believe God has, has been um, showing me signs that that's the right thing to do and and that's the direction that we, we as a nation need to go. Um, we don't need government constantly watching over us and constantly telling us what to do. Um, we need the freedom to, to make those decisions. And, and between you and me, government tends to be more of the problem than the solution for most things in our lives. Do you have a, a, an example of a time where you had to go against your, you know, you thought God... <laughs> Spoke to you to, to stand, take a stand alone? Oh gosh, that happens quite often. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I'll, I'll 
I'll give you just a, a couple of examples, um, and they may not be glamorous issues for, for a lot of folks. I was the the only person uh, that voted against extending unemployment benefits. Um, and and I do believe God says he wants us to be charitable, and he wants us to be philanthropic to our neighbors and help help others. But I don't believe that he meant government needs to do that and be the middleman in that charity. I, I think he says clearly you need to do it because your heart tells you to do it because you know it's what I want you to do. And uh, <clears throat> I just think it's it's time that we as politicians or as, as public servants stop trying to be charitable with other people's money. That's not charity. That's theft. Um, and, and I just, that's one of a number of occasions that I got got tired of it. Another time, um, government, you know, I don't believe God likes theft. And, and there are many times where we are used here in uh, elected office as a way to shut down certain businesses or hurt certain businesses or um, take people's property rights away. One thing that I was a lone vote on um, was banning exotic animals. And there was an instance over in Zanesville that made national news uh, where there was one guy that turned out his animals and used them as a weapon against his neighbors. <laughs> I don't know if he intended for them to get hurt or he just was trying to make a, a sad statement. Um, but because one person did that, then we passed a law that took the property of hundreds of other people. And, and I don't know why in the world anyone wants a wolf or a bear or any of these other things, but it's their property. They've invested tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes much more. And because one person did something wrong, we took the property and the freedoms and the rights of thousands of other people that didn't do anything wrong. And that's wrong. I, it, it, that's, that's classic government reaction to a tragedy. When one person does something wrong, we go after a bunch of law-abiding good people and take their freedoms away. And I I'm just get tired of that being government's first response to everything. Wow, those are those are you say little things, but you know, oftentimes it's little things that that matter a lot and are you 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 get a lot of flack for and so I but uh I, I can see where, yes, you, God calls you to do that, and you, you've got to take that stand because you answer to a higher authority. Yeah, and and I use this one, and, and uh, some of my colleagues didn't like this comparison, but just because one person um, used a gun for a bad purpose in Connecticut and shot up a, some innocent school children doesn't mean we need to take away the rights of a 100-plus million people in our country that have never done anything wrong with a gun and that need it to protect themselves and their homes and their families. You know, that that's that's wrong because one one person is is messed up in the head. Uh, we don't need to take away the freedoms and rights and ability to protect themselves from another 100 million people. You know, the show is titled Politically Wise and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Do you pray for a politician? Do you think a politician can be a Christian? Do you think a politician should stand up for Christian principles? Do you think politicians should pray together? Do you want to see more Christians in politics? If you said yes to any of these questions, please join the Ohio Prayer Caucus Network. Find the Ohio Prayer Caucus Network on Facebook. Welcome back to Politically Wise. How would you recommend someone is struggling with a, with a, with an issue that would might cost them their political position and or cost them <coughs> their you know but it take that unpopular stance what what advices would you would you give them <clears throat> pray about it first off you know god won't lead you the wrong way you know even if he shuts one door for you he'll open up another you know maybe maybe someone's just too honest and <laughs> and too good to be in politics because uh, I've seen some of the, the ugly side of it um, during my time. Um, but trust me, he'll open up another door for you if this one shuts. Um, and, and people shouldn't be so afraid of their next election 
Um, because once you compromise your principles, once you vote against your beliefs that first time, you'll, you'll be much more likely to do it again. What, what safeguards do you recommend to keep someone on their, that, that path of, of listening to the Lord? And, I mean, you said read the Bible. That, that was, what other safeguards would you recommend? Um, obviously read the Bible. Um, sit down and, and have at least a few minutes every day where you, you uh, tune everything else out and just, uh, you know, pray over things and think about things. Um, but also keep yourself in fellowship with other people who are of that same mindset. Um, you know, when I uh, get get an opportunity to, to, to hang out with you and the rest of the, the morning prayer group, um, you do it almost every Wednesday. Um, but when I get a chance to hang out with that group, then I... Just a, a refresher on your mind that whole day, and sometimes it falls, it sticks with you for a few more days. You know, uh, it, it's good to do that daily, um, at least more than just on Sunday. Um, because, you know, a lot of, lot of Christians go to church on Sunday and then they, you know, by lunch on Sunday, they've completely forgotten about what they learned and the rest of the week they don't seem to be paying attention. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's too true in our culture of the day. That's too true. Girl. Um, if someone wants to get into politics, what, what do you recommend? Them? <clears throat> what, what, what advice would you give them? Um, don't let anyone tell you you cannot do it. Um, cause again, I was, when I first ran, I was 24. I was in a five way race with a city councilman, a township trustee in what the second largest township in Delaware County, uh, an insurance agent that had a couple insurance agencies in, in my county. Uh, and a lot of the quote unquote political powers were telling me, oh, you're just too young. You got to wait your turn. You can't do it. Um, but you know, I went out and worked harder than any of them. I, had a, a clear message that several of them didn't have, and I stood for something, um, which, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick on anyone else, but some of them didn't, I couldn't tell what they stood for. Um, and, you know, you disprove a lot of people when, um, you know, you, you rise up against the establishment and, and you're able to be successful. So I would just tell them, no matter what the establishment tells you, no matter what the powers that be tell you, don't let them convince you that you cannot do it. Um, that's, that's number one. And I think that gives me a lot of freedom and liberty because I've never had to wait my turn. I've never had to wait for people to, you know, christen me to, to run for something or to, to take an opportunity. Anything else you want to add that I have thought about to ask you? What else do you? <laughs> <laughs> what else is there? Yeah. No, what, no. What's your future look like? What are you going to be here till they kick you out, or <clears throat> you might have other plans, or maybe it's too early to let the cat out of the bag just yet? Oh goodness, I don't know what my my future plans will be. You know, in in politics, you know, percentage of it deals with uh, opportunities that present themselves to you. Um, I guess just just work hard, stand for something, try and do what I think is right down here every day. And um, if if better opportunities or, or bigger opportunities, let's just say that, present themselves, and I'll you know take a look. But I'm I would be hesitant to say I'd ever love to go to Washington because it's so messed up out there that I don't know if it can be fixed. Uh, and I. I know I get frustrated here in Columbus uh, when I think my colleagues are heading in a more liberal, bigger government uh, direction than I'd like to go. But um, in Washington, it's multiple times bigger and multiple times worse than it is at the state level. And it would just scare the socks off me to see how corrupt, how big... Um, that things are in Washington, and I just get frustrated that I can't fix it. Because hmm. that's, a, you know, as a as a man, as a guy, your natural tendency is to want to fix something. Um, and when you go to Washington, you realize that it's so screwed up that it cannot be fixed. I think you just be frustrated. 
<laughs> you are, you are, but I think you're plowing good ground here, though, at the State House. And so I, I appreciate this time we spend together. Uh, this interview is with uh, State Senator Chris Jordan, uh, recorded in his office. Uh, and I greatly appreciate the, your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Thank you for listening today. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Please like us on our Facebook page, Politically Wise. Now, here is your blessing. Blessings based on Psalms 107, verses 13 through 15. May God deliver you out of your troubles. May God hear your cries of distress. May God break your chains and keep you from stumbling in darkness. May you know God's unfailing love.